I'm uh, Rick Esther Bienstock, and I produced, uh, directed, and wrote the documentary Tales from the Organ Trade. Tales from the Organ Trade is a uh, documentary, investigative documentary, about the black market, black market trade in human organs, largely kidneys, because those that's really the lion's share of the black market in human organs is about the kidney trade. The film I did prior to this was about sex trafficking, and while making that film, I was following a man whose wife had been trafficked uh, to Turkey, and at one point I was interviewing him, and he said, I'd do anything to get her back. I'd even sell my kidney. Just like we'd say, I'd give my right arm to get someone back. So I thought, okay, that's an unusual expression. How prevalent is this? I was curious to understand who's buying, who's selling, how are they transacting, where are they going, what is it, you know, what is this trade made of? How is this whole thing happening and why? And, you know, what the issues are. Each bit of access is, is gained in a different way. The toughest thing in the organ trade film was the traffickers themselves and the surgeons who are doing these black market uh, operations and the doctors who are involved. At the end of the day, people who are doing this are regular people, right? It's not doing a drug story and dealing with drug traffickers who don't want to be identified. So you're dealing with human beings who are desperate. They're doing something illegal, but on a human level, they have a story to tell. I wanted to try and piece together all the players from one single black market operation. And it was international, considered an international organ trafficking ring. And so all of them would be in different places on the globe. But I thought, in a kind of like a Rashomon way, how did you land in a small clinic on the outskirts of Pristina? How did you land there? And um, so that was a little bit the conceit. It took a long time and lots of connections. The notorious Turkish surgeon, Dr. Sunmez, is wanted by Interpol. He's a fugitive from justice, so that made it a bit tough. I finally got hold of him by email. Over time, I mean, we were emailing back and forth, and I said, just meet me for coffee. Just meet me for coffee. And no crew, no cameras. And so uh, he agreed. He's agreed to meet me for coffee. And I went to Turkey for coffee and I had a crew you know, on hold, but, and that's how I kind of pieced together. There was an Israeli surgeon who has never spoken to the media before, and same thing, I sent him an email, I got his email through somebody who had a patient who had actually worked with him, same thing, coffee. I was traveling, I was having a lot of coffee in different areas of the globe. There is a propaganda machine as far as looking at it from only one viewpoint, that organs are stolen against uh, people's wishes, but I can say that from my experience that uh, the donor seemed quite willingly to do the surgery. No one's completely unbiased. You know, people talk about doing stories. You're not, but I have to say that when I initially uh, thought about this subject matter, if I had a bias, it was that the, it's purely exploitative, it's horrible, it sounds heinous. I started feeling like I'm in this very morally ambiguous world, and I started questioning my own moral and ethical assumptions about this. Really, the whole film lives in the gray area, but as a documentary maker who does human rights issues, it's not, it wasn't a comfortable place to be at first, because I felt like, wait, this is not an out-and-out -out condemnation. The surgeon who I interviewed he, he might be criminal, they're trying to get him behind bars, he's done thousands of these operations, but when I speak to his patients, they think he saves lives. It was really a very interesting world to enter, and my views have shifted for sure. I'd love to take responsibility for the idea of David Cronenberg, but uh, actually it was an associate producer when I was looking into who might be an appropriate narrator. You know, we try and make films with no narration. This was investigative and it wasn't possible, but you don't want the voice of God narrator on this film. From a country called Moldova, Raul's donor will be the final link in the anatomy of a black market operation. I thought it was a stroke of genius because, um, well, we all know David Cronenberg's reputation. He deals with uncomfortable thing, uh, films about the body and body parts, but it makes you uncomfortable. And I felt that this film makes you uncomfortable because it's not the narrative you'd expect from a 
film of the black market organ trade. It, it was not to be the voice of authority, but just telling you the story, taking you through the steps. Tales from the Organ Trade has been, I've now screened and spoken at many symposiums on organ trafficking and many universities with a lot of the big thinkers on this issue. I, you know, I take some pride in that because I really show what I believe was the reality on the ground and, and it's being, the film is being kind of taken in and even in some areas of the film are controversial but taken in by people who legitimately work in the field and they, you know, want to screen it at universities in ethics courses and so you feel at least that there's an impact. I think it informs people about an issue they might not have known a lot about. How does it work? How do they find a black market transplant overseas? Like you just, how does it transact? Who gets the money? And then you start going after the people that can answer those questions and hopefully tell uh, a, a compelling story and bring people into places that the, you know normally you wouldn't be.